Hey there folks. So I'm, I'm back here with the OLED Game Boy Color uh, because I, I may have missed a step during my install as far as the testing goes and uh, well, let's see if I can't um, clear that up. So when I did this install originally, um, this was the Game Boy motherboard that I had started out with. Uh, it had a very old Funny Playing 9380 kit in there, which should have been an indicator to me what was going on, um, but it wasn't. Uh, so long story short, there are six different revision, six different known retail revisions of the Game Boy Color motherboard, and I believe five revisions of the Game Boy Color CPU itself. Um, and so what's going on on those original funny playing kits was there was a weird bug that was present on four of those five revision CPUs. And this specific motherboard is one of the motherboards that did not have that bug present. Uh, and so I, I don't know what the specific bug is. I don't know the details about it, but either way, it caused a conflict with the funny playing, the, f the, the 9380 screen, the one that has long been out of print here, um, well, th this specific kit at the very least, where I believe one of the columns on the right side of the screen was either duplicated or missing or something of that sort. Either way, it has not been a problem for a long time, so I stopped testing for it, and it may be a problem here. Now, of course, my display is looking totally fine. Uh, apparently one of the trigger games is Koro Koro Kirby or Kirby's Tilt and Tumble, which is convenient because I have one right here. Um, and what happens is the, the bottom few rows um, become kind of shimmery and, and um, flicker in and out, and I am not experiencing that right now. So again, this is a Revision 06 PCB with a Revision E CPU in there. We'll, I'll, I'll show you, we'll, we'll talk about more details on that when I get there. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap it out with the board that is in this Game Boy, uh, which I believe is a Revision 4 board. Yeah, you can tell by looking under the spring here for the battery terminal. Uh, without having to pull these things apart, you see 04 there means this is a revision 4 board. And under this one, I can get that spring out of the way. You don't have to move it entirely, it's just easier to see with the camera and the lighting. You see that's 06 for uh, revision 06. Uh, but let me go ahead and pull this out. And uh, we'll see what's going on. Thinking back, I don't think I ever even tested if the resets were uh, causing issues. That hasn't been a problem in such a long time either that I've just assumed it's not going to be a problem again, but who knows? Anyway, um, I suppose I can talk while I'm doing this. Uh, if this does end up being a problem. The solution is either going to be buy another kit for use with your specific motherboard. Oh, come on. There we go. Or um, track down a, or, or, or wait for them to fix it with the new kits, if, if they even bother fixing it in the new kits. I don't know. Uh, so let me tear down the other one and we can do some comparisons with between the boards. I don't know what the most common board is for Game Boys, uh, well, Game Boy Colors in specific. Um, in my uh, power spreadsheet that I keep, uh, that is, I, I have a spreadsheet. Whenever I do these backlight kit videos, I measure the power usage both before and afterwards. Um, I keep a spreadsheet of all those details linked in the description, uh, so if you expando the description underneath the video, uh, there will be a link to my site, which is effectively just a uh, domain that I own that links to a GitHub site, <laughs> or redirects. Uh, but 
on that GitHub site is a link to a Google Drive, um, which has a Microsoft Excel document hosted there. Um, if you open up that document, it'll try opening up in Google Sheets, and it is, it, it's an Excel file. It works a lot better if you just open it in Excel, but you can still view it, and most everything seems to work fine. But either way, I record all of the CPU revisions and board revisions that I use, and 04 seems to be the most common among my boards, so I'm gonna assume that 04 in general is the most common. Um, I don't know what's up with that. It probably varies by region, but if you're looking real close at these two boards, you see the biggest difference is the revision 06 board doesn't have, it, it's missing a component here. There's just empty space. Uh, so what this component is on normal boards, this is effectively the system memory that the CPU is using. And on this revision board, they integrated that into the CPU. Every other revision board, uh, so 04, 05, 01, even the prototypes had a dedicated um, system memory module. But on this board, they integrated it into the die and then they only made I don't know however many they made, but it, it seems to be relatively uncommon. Uh, you can see from the date code on this thing that it was made the 41st week of 2001, which honestly I expected it to be a little bit later given the, um, the life cycle of these things. Uh, whereas this one, two revisions before, this is a revision D CPU, that's a revision E CPU. Uh, so, I might actually want to find an older board. We'll try this one first, and if I'm able to reproduce it on this one, then I won't bother searching for another board. Um, but I'm thinking that the issue is present on all non-revision eCPUs, but it could also be the same issue that was affecting those older funny playing boards. Um, and if that's the case, it might work on some revision D CPUs. We'll see. Get that plug there. Oh, I'm gonna need my D pad riser here. Cause I'm not gonna bother putting this 06 board back in whether it works or not. Or maybe I will, we'll see. I mean, it's all the same to me. Either it works or it doesn't, you know? The funny thing about this though is Oh no, I didn't realize that was all wired up. Ugh. Oh well. Um, the manufacturer of both of these screen kits, well, it's the same manufacturer for both of these screen kits, so it'll be funny if there's a bug in this one but not in this one. I should have just desoldered it from the board side. Oh, but button controls are bugged on this specific kit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just not re-implement those. And I don't know what that was hooked up to. <laughs> I don't know if it was hooked up to anything. <laughs> oh, shit. Try this out. I'm just gonna install it in the front half of the shell to try and make this whole thing easier. And while we're here, I'll also rerun the power usage. Um, it's not gonna be too useful of a number unless I hook up an OEM screen to this thing which I'm not planning on doing. 
uh, but I did make a mistake in the original video. I, I even said this at the beginning of the video and then I, I totally rolled it back. Totally forgot about it. I'm just so you, I'm set in my ways and used to uh, how these kits normally work. Um, but I mentioned that OLED screens, um, the black levels are considered perfect on OLED screens because each pixel is self-illuminating. Uh, so when a pixel goes black, it just turns off. Like there's no light bleed or anything. It's it's actually pretty nice. Um, but one implication of that means when you have the pixel grid on and the screen is, um, you know, only two thirds of the or three quarters of the screen are illuminated. You're, you know, that's potentially twenty five percent more power saved. So, uh, what? Oops. I tin that without actually soldering it. So, in theory, running the pixel grid might actually have some power savings. But, uh, let's try it out. Hmm, and mine seems to be working totally fine. I don't see that issue that I was seeing on the uh, other post. It might just be that some kits are bugged. That'd be interesting. Uh, there's another 04 in here. I'd have to look up and see what CPU that is. Uh, here is a stupidly beat up board, um, but I bet this thing boots and it's a revision B CPU. So let's see if we can recreate the bug on this thing. Ugh. The, uh, <laughs> the DC jack is broken. Oh, but it still works. Nice. <laughs> uh, I, I, I keep that board on my desk. Um, because it does actually work. Like it, it looks like it shouldn't. And for all intents and purposes, it shouldn't, but it does. And I put zero effort into fixing it. I figured I'd convert it into like a pocket color at some point. I just, the day hasn't come. <laughs> all right. So yeah, this one's a revision B CPU made in week 47 of 1998. So this is a very early board. This one in particular does not have the pins trimmed, so I'll need to be a little bit careful around pinch-relating. Or I could just trim it, but I'm not gonna do that. Because this thing's only living in here for like 20 minutes, if that. does not have working audio, and uh, that is not because it's missing a speaker. Um, that certainly doesn't help, but... I mean, you can see all the schmoo around the volume wheel on this thing. This specific board has seen better days. Power switch is not taking solder. <laughs> it is very corroded. That's um that's promising, right? <sighs> okay, well I already screwed it in and it's too much effort to fix, so. Which pin? 
none of them. Ah, oh, there it is. This is just for testing. It is absolutely not the proper way to do this, but good enough. Now, plug that in and plug, oh, oh no. I forgot this thing was missing the bale. Oh. That makes life difficult. I can shove something in there, just not easily while it's installed. Maybe I can cheese it. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it if I lose colors. That's, um,. It's kind of gonna just happen. Uh, but, <laughs> but I noticed my text still isn't shimmering. Uh, it's, uh, oh. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm not able to reproduce that issue. even on the super old revision board that I have. Uh, I think I have a revision zero one board somewhere. I'll have to look up and see what it's in. Uh, and we can try that. It might also be a, uh, another game that I can more easily trigger that on, but so far everything seems to be working. Um, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to pause for a few minutes and see where I have a revision 01 board hanging around and we'll go from there. Never mind. I uh simply don't have a revision 01 board. I thought I did. Uh I have plenty of older revisions for pretty much every other model, just not Game Boy color. So, we'll put the O four board back in. I'll save the 06 board for other shenanigans. Um, it is, I don't know if I have two or if I only have one. I think I only have one working 06 board. So if shenanigans like this come up again, it'll be nice to have on hand for other things. So I'll put the 04 board back in here and then we'll do some quick power testing. Actually, even beyond that, I can just test, uh, power usage. Uh, let's just pretend it is a fresh install. I'll go from there. Monsters and then <sighs> Sorry guys, that was um, not what I was expecting to happen, but a result's a result. And I still haven't reflashed the firmware for my monitor, so we're down on the OLED for the power supply here. I'll have to take my word for it, I'm sorry. Oh. So, in Pokemon Silver, with a totally different board, um, hand off that. Uh, at 2.4 volts, it is pulling uh, between
between 64 and 68 milliamps, which I think is the exact same as the 06 board. Um, so that's nice. But all we care about is the comparison. And installing the kit should go super quick because it's more or less already installed. Wire up power. That is a terrible looking joint. I'm going to fix that. Putting the work in, I might as well do it right. The screen. And you see, it's a CPU revision D, and I totally forgot to put my D pad adjustment shims in, but that's okay. Ugh, it's hitting the overcurrent limit, and I don't actually know how to adjust it from this. Uh. Oh, there we go. I'll just do that. It's not very quick, but I don't know how to use my tool otherwise. How about we'll set it to 1.2 amps. That should be more than enough for the inrush there. Yeah. And hopefully it's still good with the game in. Oh, and it's set to max brightness. I'm sure that's not helping. I've been doing burn-in tests with this. All right, so in Pokemon Silver, in the exact same place, it always is, uh, oh, my hand, uh, at 2.4 volts, the console is pulling 327 to 336 milliamps. And now I'm gonna turn on the pixel grid. And that is also a result. Fascinating. Okay, so if you can't see that, it is now pulling maxed out at 307. Minimum I'm seeing is 297. Um, interestingly, with the OSD open, it actually pulls less power. Um, I'm guessing because blue is only using one of the three subpixels, whereas white that text box underneath uses all three. Uh, so this is not exactly the best test for OLEDs. Fascinating, I'm gonna have to figure something out for that. Um, I like doing real world testing, you know, with a, with a video game, but I might have to start using synthetic tests for OLEDs just because the content on screen itself can change so rapidly that it'll um, noticeably impact the power usage. How fascinating is that? I mean, it makes sense logically. I just didn't, I'm so used to the way um, LCDs work that it just doesn't matter. Wow, fascinating. Okay, anyway. That's certainly a result. Uh, we are, of course, at max brightness, so let me set it to minimum brightness and just see how low we can get it to go. So we're still at 2.4 volts. It is, I saw 218 minimum and 226 max.
Let me go back to where it was. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, there, there's some implications there that I'm gonna have to think on. I don't necessarily have a conclusion right now. Um, 216 to 222. Just kidding, 227. Um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously it's more. That's the expected result. Um, I have so many lights on, I didn't realize you can't actually see the screen. Uh, but trust me, it's on, it's viewable, but this is not the brightness I would use it at. I'd probably bump it up a little more. Well, I'd also probably have the pixel grid off. Um, but were I using the pixel grid, I think five is a, is a good level, maybe four. Yeah, I don't know. Very interesting. Um, and just as an update, about to end this video here, just as an update, the um, burn-in testing is still in progress. I am at almost 150 hours on a test image, test screen. Yeah, let me get it. Uh, just to show you guys what I'm doing. Originally, I had started the burn-in testing with um, not Pokemon Silver specifically, but a Pokemon game on the battle screen. But now I'm doing the gradient color bar test in 240p because this gives us a section of each of the subpixels. So I can look for these bars in the burn-in later and see which ones are causing the most issues. You know, is red going first, is green going first, is blue going first, etc. Um, I think that is a much more valuable test. But... At 150 hours so far, oops, that's not what I want. I want solid color screen. Where is it? Is it in color test? I didn't think it was. Solid screen, that's it. Then we can set this down to gray. And look for any disruptions in the background and I mean, if I look real close, I think I can see some burn in where that white bar was, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking for an issue. Like I had to set it to optimal conditions and then like look at it through a microscope just to see if there's an issue. And yeah, I believe I can see some evidence of burn in. Um, I I'm trying to think of how to word this. It, it's not an issue, not so far at the very least. And again, that's been 100% a static screen. I've literally just turned it on and left it at the screen. Um, that This is not representative of how these things are actually used. So, so far so good. Um, it is living up to my, it's exceeding my expectations if I'm being honest. Um, I expected there to be more issues. This company is really good at, uh, well, um, fucking up on the first go around, better or worse. Um, I don't know. I'm unable to reproduce that issue though. If you guys have any more details on it, um, any more definitive triggers slash causes, I certainly don't mind giving this another shot, but as is, that uh, person who was having issues, maybe they just got a defective kit. It's, that's the, um, as far as I can tell, that's what's going on because it worked on my 04 board and my 02 board with no issues. So anyway, that's all I've got. Um, thanks for watching. I'm sorry that this wasn't the result that I was expecting. I don't know. Results are results. It's still interesting. I still learned something, so I think it's still worth uploading. Um, maybe, maybe you'll learn something too. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.